Hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Vlog where we discuss activity that goes on here with the channel, current events, headlines that are in the news, technology, and just items of interest that come up during the week that I like to share with you guys and get a little feedback on your opinions and thoughts. And if this is your first time here to the channel, I'd like to welcome you guys here. And as a reminder, your support is always appreciated and I would ask you guys to click on that watermark down there in the bottom right hand corner to subscribe along with that bell. So if you guys want to continue to get the Friday vlogs and or uploads here to the channel, you guys will get it as soon as they are released. So this week you see that there are two posts in gaming, starting it off with Civilization VI Rise and Fall as Hojo Tokimune of Japan. I'm kind of happy to be back playing a little Civilization VI so you guys can anticipate seeing more of that. If you are subscribed and have clicked the bell, just be aware that they will be released on Saturdays, Mondays, Wednesday, Thursdays. So if you're receiving those mail notifications, just I wanna let you guys know um, you'll be getting about three or four that week. And of course, you'll get the Friday vlog included in there. Also, we had a live stream from Pantheon, Rise of the Fallen, the MMORPG in the traditional style gameplay. Very excited to see some of the changes uh, that have been made there to the game. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Another traditional MMORPG or in the style of the MMORPG tradition very much like EQ. So you guys can check both of those out with the links that are posted there in the top right hand corner. They came for Alex Jones, but we were not Alex Jones. On Monday, August the 6th, 2018, Alex Jones was deplatformed from various social media sites. Now the reason behind this is going to vary, but starting at 3 a.m. it began with Apple iTunes, then Spotify, LinkedIn, Chipmail, Facebook, and lastly, YouTube. On YouTube, Alex Jones had roughly 2.4 million subscribers with 36,000 videos and 1.5 or 1.6 billion views. When CNN let off their story about Alex Jones, it was Oliver Darcy who suggested that it was the mainstream media who played a part in his deep platform. This does not surprise me because the mainstream media is always trying to inject itself into any kind of a victory and any kind of an instance where someone that they disagree with is being punished or deplatformed or even whatever is happening with that person that they're trying to destroy. So the thing is that these platforms gave different reasons as to why uh, he was removed and it typically revolved around the terms of service or that he was fomenting or outlining or propagating uh, hate speech. Now, the American Bar Association here in the United States, that is the community of lawyers for our friends out there who are from foreign countries or may not be familiar with the American legal system, but the American Bar Association does have a definition of what hate speech is. But in the United States, we do not have a hate speech law specifically. So we still are able to exercise our freedom of speech. We can make slurs, we can talk about uh, different religions, we can talk about different sexual orientations, and we can disagree with these particular individuals and, and there's no particular punishment. Now, that does not make it any different when it comes to private platforms because these particular platforms are private businesses and if you are part of any of these then you know that you have to go through um, an application process and uh, you have to agree to their policies, their terms of service, their EULAs, their end user license agreements. So you have to submit a documentation to them that you will participate uh, on their terms. And if you look through some of the legalese that they put on there, it will say that uh, your channel, your account, your membership can be terminated at any time without notice. So if they want, they can just shut the whole thing down. We saw that with Vidme. Vidme was a video platform very similar to BitChute. Uh, these tried to compete with YouTube, but nonetheless, um, they completely shut down. So, and that was the end of that was the end of Vidme. So, um, it's a little disconcerting. And uh, as a content creator myself, particularly one who is a conservative. We are seeing that conservatives are being shadow banned. They are being silenced. They are being pursued. Now, I'm not saying that from a victim standpoint or anything. I believe that uh, some of these platforms do allow for uh, speech to carry forward 
and that we're able to express ourselves in ways that we would like. But um, it, and it isn't just conservatives that are being shut down here. I'm not trying to be biased in any way. Uh, uh, liberals are shut down as well, or extreme individuals on either side are being shut down. But it is a little concerning because of the timing. Now, we have the midterm elections that are about to come up here. Uh, so individuals here in the United States can vote for their representatives in Congress. So that's going to be coming around in November. And we're seeing kind of some moves, some shuffles that are going on in the tech giant industry. Now, what is interesting and something I want to point out here is that Alex was not removed from Twitter. And Jack Dorsey has, you know, pretty much been very outspoken about his political views. And I have mentioned it here several times about Jack Dorsey. But nonetheless, Alex is still active on Twitter. I was trying to think he is also on Instagram, which I thought was interesting because Facebook owns Instagram. So maybe it's only a matter of time before they pursue him there. And, and even LinkedIn, I'm not quite sure why LinkedIn would have dropped him um, unless he was maybe linking some of his videos or he was talking about certain businesses or companies. I don't know. Um, I know that like Tim Pool tried to research it and he wasn't able to come up with anything uh, as far as what, what Alex may have posted there on LinkedIn. But nonetheless, it is a little concerning because right now, as you guys may already know, I don't, I don't know how many of you guys keep up with what goes on uh, here on YouTube or on social media in general. You guys probably just enjoy it. It's your entertainment. It's what you enjoy doing. I work in this business, and so I get to see a lot of the, the, um, the backdoor things that are going on or, or the inside baseball, as it were, as to what's going on here. And there is an information war. Um, you guys may recall on Twitter, for example, um, some figures that have been mentioned there this week. Uh, first, first of them being Sarah Jung, who um, is a reporter, journalist, activist uh, that was gonna be hired by the New York Times who made racial statements. Uh, and there didn't seem to be any particular repercussions uh, for her to be deplatformed. As a matter of fact, she's getting hired by the New York Times. And then of course we had uh, Michael Cernovich who brought all those tweets together from James Gunn, you guys may recall that. So Cernovich had posted all those video or all those comments that James Gunn, uh, the uh, filmmaker had uh, filmmaker of uh, Gar Guardians of the Galaxy had made, you know, all his little statements. So I'm not even gonna tell you what those were. I didn't find them funny. Um, they can call it dark humor. I don't find it humorous, particularly the topic and the subject, which I'm not gonna mention either. Um, to me, it seems like he was just kind to express a proclivity, a penchant for whatever sexual desire the man had uh, and was disguising it in a joke, but that's not for me to say, I have no idea. And then we saw uh, Candace, I'm sorry, uh, it would be uh, Kansas, Candace Owens, the conservative black young female who took one of the comments that Sarah made and replaced uh, white male with black male. Now, Candace, if you didn't know, is a black female herself. And uh, Twitter uh, suspended her account or began to suspend her account till they discovered that, um, you know, what she had actually done was simply replace the word to kind of see if, you know, she would be able to say a comment that would be perceived as racial and still be able to stay on the platform because nothing happened to Janet or I'm sorry, nothing happened to uh, Sarah Jung. So I'm getting ahead of myself here. So uh, this weekend, Candace Owens and um, Charlie Kirk from um, a particular conservative outlet were at a breakfast uh, restaurant there in Philadelphia called Green Eggs and Ham. And they were identified by a group or several people from Antifa. So while they were enjoying their breakfast and minding their own business and talking about uh, whatever it is that they were talking about with their company uh, that, Charlie, that Charlie owns, um, a group of Antifa individuals in a flash mob fashion, which is very indicative of 2018, were outside and um, they were basically heckled out of the restaurant, I think. I don't even know if they even were able to start their breakfast or not. And then they went outside and they were heckled even more. And then one of the Antifa people actually poured water on Charlie, who took it very well. They didn't uh, yell back or scream or anything. Uh, Candace did point a few fingers and was, was, uh, was visibly irritated. But Charlie took it all in stride. Now, I guess if he really wanted to pursue it, or they both did, they could have uh, pursued um, like simple battery charges for the water because anything you do with malice or, 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 or whatnot, 
against another person, even if it's innocuous as pouring water or spitting or, or, or so forth, could be you know, perceived as a simple battery if you wanted to pursue it. But nonetheless, I find it very interesting because this is exactly what Maxine Water was calling for in, in some regards, not, not independent individuals, but uh, representatives or individuals within the Trump administration. And um, so I just wanted you guys to kind of see the contrasting between what is allowed and was not allowed because um, the mainstream media is piling on right now. Um, I want to kind of share just kind of a personal note with you guys here. And that is, um, I told my parents, I told my family, I told my friends that I felt that the next Republican president that we have here in the United States is going to face a backlash, a pile on, and an extraordinary uh, yellow journalism form of attack by the mainstream media, Democrats, the left, and anybody who opposes the particular views of a Republican president or a conservative president or an outsider like Trump. Now, I'm not saying that to particularly espouse my, my political views. I'm telling you this, guys, as a point of reference, and you're seeing it. I grew up in the 80s. I grew up in the late 80s when Ronald Reagan was president, and I saw what the media did there. I saw what the media did because people told me. They said, wow, the mainstream media is really doing all this and that and the other towards Ronald Reagan. But I knew it was going to be even worse in 2018. And not only are we seeing that happening within government, which is typical, but now what concerns me is the mainstream media is now going after individuals like me, for example, with a camera and a microphone. You know, we go on, we espouse our ideas, we espouse our concepts. See, the mainstream media is incredibly concerned about influence. They're, con they're concerned about influential people because the mainstream media perceives themselves as the fourth branch of government here in the United States, at least. And so they feel like they can use their kind of, um, we do you a favor and then um, we give you good press or we will not give you good press and we will basically destroy you. So they use these very underhanded, very diabolical tactics to people. And I'll give you kind of a simple example of this, and this is kind of a generalization, but um, uh, David Cohn, uh, the attorney for President Trump, or one of the attorneys for President Trump, they probably told him, hey, flip on Trump or face the consequences. And we saw what happened with David Cohn. They did the same thing with Paul Manafort. Flip on Trump, give us the dirt, or we're going after you. And that's basically the way the mainstream media operates. Now, I know I'm, I'm kind of coming from, a, from a, um, a biased standpoint as a conservative, but uh, you know this situation that happened with Alex is really irritating. Um, I'm grateful that you guys are humoring me this and allowing me to, to express myself here with you guys. It's, normally, I try to make the channel fun and engaging and exciting with gaming and, and, and just fun activities for you guys to uh, diversify yourselves with and kind of take yourselves out of the real world. But this is very troubling what happened with Alex Jones. And um, I'm going to continue to keep an eye on this. I started this video earlier during the week because I was just so freaking pissed off about it. But nonetheless, I wanted to go ahead and share this with you guys. And... Um, We'll see what uh, unfolds during the week. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this Friday vlog. I'm starting to lose my voice, and I kind of incorporated the incident that happened there with Candace Owens and uh, Charlie Kirk as uh, the segment in there with Alex Jones just to kind of mix things up so you guys could have a bit of a comparison contrast. I hope that I didn't lose too many of you guys in that uh, kind of a bit of a rant dialogue. Um, but nonetheless, I am going to keep an eye on what's going to be happening there on that activity. Guys, I thank you so much for your support. The Friday vlogs are actually growing in a way that I would never have anticipated. Uh, this this was something that fellow YouTubers and friends had suggested that I do. So here you are, another Friday vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was more of a passionate one, a little bit more uh, information about myself. And again, I, I really want to make this channel fun and exciting and engaging with my audience. I don't want people to be torn between political lines and stuff like that. I just want to, um, you know, keep you guys entertained. And I just, uh, this was something that needed to be said because even if you disagree with an Alex Jones, right, or, or, or other figures that you may not agree with, shutting them down sets a very terrible precedence. This is just, just not good. It's not something that would typically happen in the United States, but I think because it, because it happened under the auspices of social media or private companies, it was a little bit easier to shut them down without, you know, it becoming a legal issue. Uh, but something, something certainly to be concerned about. 
All right, now I want to encourage you guys now to click on that watermark that you see appearing there on your screen so you guys can continue to receive uh, the vlogs each Friday along with the other material that are covered here on the channel. And then click that bell so that you guys can get the notifications if you want to be notified as the videos are uploaded and as they come out. And as I mentioned earlier, um, you're gonna see more of releases as I am letting out the Let's Play for Civilization VI. I will see you guys here as I lose my voice next Friday.